Hey, welcome back to the Young Acquisitions Knitting Podcast. My name is Victoria. You call me Vic, or you could also call me Husseline, or mm, or Husselong, Husselong, uh, whichever tickles your fancy. I mean, Vic is like super easy, so you can choose that. Um, and today I got. Um, hoji cha uh, with milk so it's a hoji cha milk tea I know I've been saying it's latte but it's really milk tea like mm. and it's still <clears throat> warm because I made it right before preparing for the podcast so yeah too bad it's not super hot yet anymore. And first of all, my I'm wearing the olive cardigan that I made into a dress. Now, I know you can't see the whole thing, but it looks good. Um, I mean, I guess I could stand on the chair. And I'm wearing um, some stockings with it. And a bra because it's um, a little see-through in the bust area. Oh well, I guess. And yeah, I still need like at least one more um, button. But I think I'm going to get three more buttons so I could put a button here even though I probably would never button it but it just I think it would look nice so it's like seamless or not seamless but like it would match the other buttons like you know how like on a collared shirt you would have like a button all the way up here but like ain't nobody gonna use that one unless you like tie a tie or tie a bow tie around the collared shirt. Um, so I know on the last episode, I also didn't say how much yarn is left for um, the olive cardigan dress. Like if you wanna make it into a dress, I think you would need around 300 grams of um, the fingering weight and like 225 grams of the um, of the mohair of the two strands of mohair so that counts, counts for both strands um, how many balls is that? Mm-hmm. I think it's six balls of the. Is it six balls? Six to eight, but this is for X small too. Um, I wrote it down somewhere. Let me get it. Well, I wrote down it's 250 grams of the Finita Aquamarine uh, yarn by We Are Knitters. I know We Are Knitters recently had like this, um, I guess, scandal? Controversy? Um, with their company and like because they collabed with Zara, which is a fast fashion, uh, part of the fast fashion industry and wax or we are knitters um statement about fashion is slow fashion which is the exact opposite so that collaboration was like why are you doing this like why anyways um so i use like two and a half balls of that but for regular 50 gram balls, it would be like five of them. 
at least five, right? Yeah, and it's 225 grams of the silk mohair, which is nine balls. So it's still quite a bit of yarn you still have to acquire, but it's definitely not as much as I thought. Because I think the Jenny sweater uses more fingering because it uses like three and a half balls for extra small. Um, but also it also uses less mohair because it's, it's single strand mohair. So one strand fingering, one strand silk mohair. But the, in this uh, pattern, you would uh, do two strand mohair and then um, a fingering weight. So yeah, it's a lot of yarn, especially the mohair. That was really costly, and I st and I have so much left over actually because I bought like double what I needed. Um, I have enough to make another sweater. But I'm not gonna pair them together because I don't need another color of this. I mean, in this exact color, I don't know. Um, so I'm just gonna split them. Like the Finita Aquamarine, I would probably get a, a mohair that's more suited to that color. Like a soft aqua by Knitting for Olive mohair or um, or they're just the, their aqua color or I can get an aqua color by Drops I think they also make that color in their mohair or kids silk they call it but um And then for the dusty artichoke that I have left over, I can pair it with um, a sage colored fingering or whatever um, pattern comes up that requires more hair. And I don't know that I like, but there hasn't been, I mean, any for that green that I want to make for the with the dusty artichoke. Um yeah my words it's I don't know. I just like woke up not too long ago even though it's past one probably. Um yeah I just wake up so late. I have a hard time staying up. And then because in the last episode of the podcast I actually didn't um, mention like an old project, I think. I don't remember mentioning an old project because my brain was all like mumble jumbled, honestly. Um, so this is something that I've been wearing that I forgot. I didn't know like how to wear this, but now I wear it with, um, the champagne cardigan. I wear the champagne cardigan for like with everything now, and I'm like, dude, I didn't know I would even like a beige cardigan. It's so strange, but yeah. And this is the. It's the it's a free pattern, but I don't remember where somewhere on the internet obviously someone's like blog um it's a crochet pattern because back then um i was only crocheting and this i made like f i want to say in 2017 damn that's like five years ago um oops <laughs> so basically i haven't worn it for five years um, because I would always have to wear a bra and that kind of defeats the purpose of this, um, 
bralette is it no this crop top so uh, yeah mm. so the yarn I used for this I bought at Blix like why did Blix why did, why did Blix have yarn like I don't know but they had a pretty good um, selection of yarn for a place that doesn't specialize in yarns um, so they had Hiku's Kobasi so it's cotton is a blend of cotton silk and bamboo so I think that's a really nice um, all natural non superwash um, combination and I think Hiku is a Taiwanese brand I, I think I read that somewhere but you know you can double check that I'm not a hundred percent on that either because it was like off-handed somewhere like I don't know I think it was maybe I read it on someone's like um, the shops description of the brand of Hiku I'm not even sure if that's how you pronounce it. Haiku, Hiku. I don't know. Um, but yeah, this is their. I think they said. Or on Hiku's, like, um, usually they have a blurb on their, like, little tag that they sell with the yarn. Um, they said that this was, like, a, f a fingering um, sock yarn. But, and that makes sense because there's silk in it, so that gives it the strength you need. Cotton is super durable as well as silk is. And bamboo um, is just like also more breathable. And I don't know. I don't know why they put in bamboo because all you need is cotton and silk. But um, maybe it's to make it more like smooth to like. Um, what do you call it? So the cotton isn't as rough. Because cotton can be a little rough depending on the type of cotton you get. Um, but yeah. Oh, and it has like a little bit of elastane. Some kind of like stretchy material um, and that's the reason I got this is so that it can be a little stretchy because that's the kind of yarn that the pattern recommends and now that uh, I crocheted it and I wore it a few times that's like really not that important honestly not that important um, but it does lay well on the body, probably because it's a sock yarn and it's also fingering. And I don't remember the hook size I used because it was just so long ago. It might have been a 2.0 yarn, I mean, hook size. And um, all the front part, or I mean the whole thing I think, is... Um, double crochet I think yeah I think the whole thing is double crochet and then you attach the the straps with the like slip stitches uh, crochet slip stitches and you had to um, what do you call it start from this side and then crochet all the way to this side um, and then you slip stitch it here and then you pick up stitches here and then you knit I mean you crochet all the way up here and then go from one side and then choose a side and then that strap and then choose that and then attach the other side and then crochet some more and then attach both of them so the attaching and the seaming is kind of annoying, but it's super easy with crochet just because you don't need like 
a uh, sewing needle but I think it will be um, more seamless if you did use a sewing needle I was just I actually didn't have or a tapestry needle sorry I didn't have a tapestry needle so I just used a crochet hook and you actually don't really feel it because it is such a soft and slick um, yarn and it was kind of hard to hide the ends so the ends sometimes pop out a little bit but I mean I'm wearing it under a lot of things so it doesn't really matter the only thing that's pretty annoying is that my neck is obviously way thicker than the front part that they leave for your neck so it'll just instead of laying it like this it'll just lay like this all right a little well this is a little exaggerated but you know yeah what, you, what i mean right so maybe that's why it had to be stretchy so that your head could fit through it because it's definitely not made for your head But um, yeah, the elastane is definitely not um, important, I think. Because a lot of yarns are stretchy, but maybe not cotton. <laughs> so maybe that was why, because it was mostly cotton or something. But yeah, well, at least I'm getting wear out of this because I didn't for five years. <laughs> And then I also made this out of like the spare yarn that I had from that doily. And I thought I used all five balls for that, but I didn't. I think I only used like two and a half or three or something. Um, Cause I had enough to make this, like what the heck. And I also looked on my Amazon account and um, it was actually a DK weight, a light DK weight yarn that I bought and not a worsted. So if I said it was a worsted, scratch that, it's light DK. Um, <clears throat> I think I bought it for 25 at the time, $25 USD, and now it's like 30. So, I mean, it's a little, it's a little hike in the price, but it's still a good yarn, but not good for a crop top. Ugh, my voice. <clears throat> if you hear my voice cracking, uh, it's because I didn't drink water. <laughs> so yeah, I mean the color's a little bright for my taste. Um, and the yarn is just like really stiff. Oh, but it's a little stretchy, so whatever. And it is 100% cotton, but because it's a bigger yarn, thicker yarn, um, it's just like huge. I think this is like at least a small, maybe a medium, and this is an extra small. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, or maybe this is an extra small to a small. And this is a small kind of leaning into medium maybe but yeah it's like just so huge and I don't know what to do with it maybe I can pawn it off to my cousin and be like here catch <laughs> right but this is also not her color either like bright colors is not her style I mean, technically, it's not my style either. I only like pastels and black and burgundy and navy. <laughs> or like most shades of blue, I think. I like. And then, okay, so that was to make up for last episode. And for this episode of the podcast, Your Inquisitions podcast, um, I made this. It's, um, I don't know if you can see the detail because it's kind of dark yarn. Um, 
what do you call this? It's not a lanyard, uh, it's a kumihimo braid. Or braided in the kumihimo technique, uh, the Japanese technique that is in your name. And also follow the YouTube tutorial for this. Um, maybe you can see it better like this. It's a little blurry, I think, but I think you can see the general look of it. I don't know why I made it in this gray because I don't have a lot of gray clothes. The only gray clothes I have is like a, a sweater. Um, but I don't use this much, even though it's a great core. I mean, I like it. I definitely don't think I used um, enough strands because I was being lazy. It's it happens to the best of us, and um, I I use the twenty four seven cotton by Lion Brand, which is a uh, I don't know if it actually is a moisturized cotton, but it's um what do you call it marketed as one but anyways it's like a nice thick cord um i imagine it would be really hard to cut this too and the pattern or not the pattern the name of this type of cord is let me see if I um oh, there's so much weird information on this um wait maybe I didn't make it thinner than I thought. Interesting. But it looks thinner than the um, what it looks like on that YouTube video. And this is called a Kasumi Renji. Renju. Kasumi Renju. Don't know the proper pronunciation for that. Or intonations, I should say. Um, but yeah. And you're supposed to have 20 strands to make this. I mean, I don't know yet if I used 20. It's been so long. But I made it in um, the same season that I made the other one that I showed two, a few episodes ago. I don't remember. Um, and it's that one was called the... Oshira Tami. The Oshira Tami one is also 20, um, made out of 20 strands. And this one, I guess, is also made out of 20 strands. So you can always do like, uh, I don't know. I was gonna make this like, colorful but then I didn't know how that would look so I didn't uh, so I did one color hmm. but I don't know how long this is it must be quite long oh I don't even know it like it's like my arm span yeah it's definitely my arm span so I must have just um, did my arm span and then doubled it for like um, for one strand dude that's like so much yarn and I definitely messed up a couple of times because um, you have to overlap it the same exact way every time 
uh, when you cross for the um, for the chevron in the middle. I think it's called like when it's translated, it's called like the chevron band or chevron um, something because there is like a knit stitch kind of looking thing in the middle so that's a chevron um and then the band on the side is like vertical but yeah i don't use this i mean but i like looking at it <laughs> so if you count that as using it then it is <laughs> Um, so yeah, this is a old project from 2019, no, 2020, definitely 2020, because that was the year I moved in with my boyfriend, and yeah, 2020, the other one is also sometime in 2020, maybe like the summer, or autumn, but our autumn is blend it in with our summers so because we're in California and that's just how it goes and um okay for the now I'm gonna move on to whips so this is the whip that I abandoned after starting the sleeve and this is the sweater number um nine I was about to say 19, but it's a whole different sweater by My Favorite Things Knitwear. And I covered the, um, what I used in the previous episode, but maybe I'll just say it again. It's the, the pink strand, or the purple strand is the Alpaca Cloud Lace Weight by Knit Picks, and then the beige white um, color is uh, Simply Wool Worsted Simply Wool Worsted by in the color Wendy by Knit Picks so yeah this thing is like an all Knit Pick um, make I guess even the tools um, because this is I had to buy this separately and it's a 7 millimeter um, needle and I think this is the 40 inch cable like the cable is 40 inches but it makes when it's attached to needles it's 40 inches if that makes sense but yeah I totally abandoned the freaking sleeves <laughs> after starting it because I just have such a hard time um, doing magic loop or like yeah because you just have to keep threading or just pulling the cable and I just find that super difficult for some reason or maybe tedious because it's every third part of the round and not half because if I do half then I'm like scared that um, you can see the seam, like when I did um, the socks, you could see like where I stopped. And that would be like on the edge, at outside edge, so then everybody will see it. So yeah, I'm super paranoid about that. So if I do it like this, magic loop like this instead of flat then um it's or instead of like two sides then um you you could uh you won't be able to see it as much or it becomes more seamless when you do it in the round um and i kicked also kicked up like all of my yarn for that project and I did it at night maybe it wasn't such a great idea to do it at night but 
I had to spend like a whole hour, two hours, I don't know, because it was daylight saving that day on a Sunday. So it might have been an hour, it might have been two hours because I'm not sure what time that I started winding or untangling that yarn. But yeah, it at least it took at least an hour because I had to untangle a lace weight and that's super difficult. Just untangling yarn that's not lace weight is already difficult and then you gotta untangle a lace weight that's like ugh, mind boggling. <clears throat> and the whip that I started this week is my summer knit. And if you follow me on Instagram, you probably already know. But yeah, I got this much done. And this is made, oh, this is um, camisole number four by My Favorite Things Knitwear. Um, and I mean, it's kind of an easy knit, but the pattern has a couple of mistakes in it and some things that were confusing because they don't explain it at all. Like, what the hell is a left back? Like, how do you work something left back? Like, I don't know. And they don't explain it at all, so that kind of sucks. Um, but that's um, just for the triangles. But all you need to do is just um, make sure that they're all facing the same way. So that when you connect it in the round, um, they're all facing out. Because the right side is always out when, you, when it's in the round. So that's all you need to know for that because it's a little confusing and um, the general instructions are better than their specific instructions for two sections, for two little sections. But yeah, as long as you follow the general instructions, then it you won't have a problem. Because when you're like, um, connecting all the four pieces together and joining it in the round where right after joining it in the round or when you join it in the round it says to knit two pro two but that's wrong it's knit one pro two so just so people know um because, yeah, I mean, I don't know why they, they, she hasn't fixed it for so long. Because she has test knitters, like, they should be able to see that. Or maybe it's just in the English instructions or something. And I don't think her test knitters are, um, use the English one. I think they use, like, the other ones. Um, probably Danish she speaks Danish um, oof. but yeah other than those two hiccups um, it's not really a hiccup because you could just piece it on your own um, but if you're a first-time knitter then maybe that can confuse you a little bit but yeah almost done or I'm halfway I think I'm halfway done with the body um, and I'm using uh, knitting for olive um, pure silk in uh, dusty artichoke and I think after you knit it up um, the fabric seems more soft than the individual like yarn the yarn itself it feels um a little rough but then when you knit it up and you feel the fabric it's pretty soft i don't know how or why that is but i mean 
it's interesting and um i think yeah this is three strands of silk um lightly twisted together so it'll, it'll it will split like i've had that happen as i was knitting so it's hard to like knit fast i guess um, because then sometimes you would have to undo your stitch so that you can catch all of the strands because yeah it does split quite readily um, and the pattern use is 3.5 but it, it kind of looks uh, or 3.5 millimeters, but it's kind of a little holy in the garter sections, so I'm not sure how that will wash up or how see-through it might be. I mean, yeah. And it's not the fault of the pattern, it's just like maybe so it can drape better, you know, that kind of thing. Although you can use this yarn in a 3.0, but I'm sure you'd have to like size up. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to knit this pattern how it is and see like if it really is really see-through. Because like this, you don't see that it, I mean, I don't think it's that see-through, but when you wash and stretch it out, I'm not sure. Or block it when you block it I'm not sure but because it's silk you could just um, toss this in the wash on uh, on cold probably in light colors um, with light colors um, so that's probably what I'm gonna do and then um, block it or just like lay it out flat to dry because I don't think I'm gonna stretch it out that much because it would stretch when you're wearing it anyways so I mean I guess if you want it super loose then you can block it a lot but yeah in that case I'm not sure yeah and kind of scared to do the straps because Silk does um, stretch or not stretch, uh, lengthen after washing. So um, not sure how that will turn out. And this is what a ball looks like. Uh, she reckon. Uh, my favorite things to knitwear recommends two balls, but this is like there's just so much yarn still, and I'm only like this much into the ball, so I feel like this is enough to finish this, but we'll see when I actually finish it. And oh my gosh, this week. This coming week, um, we're gonna have a heat wave, so hopefully that knit will be nice to work on this week because I don't think I'll work on the sweater. Even though I have other sweater plans, like, I don't know because I know this room is always colder than all the other rooms. Um, so maybe I can only work on, work on it in here, so that I'm not like sweating my butt off, um, working it, working it like outside or like in the other room. Uh, sorry for scratching. It's just I'm itchy. Um, so those are my two whips right now, and uh, I'm gonna go over. The yarn that I got, hence your acquisitions, because you need yarn to make anything. 
or at least um, knit and crochet anything or braid I guess so this is stuff that I got from Color Mart and this is their um, their black what is it extra fine merino and 2% vicuña I mean it's only 2% so that's like nothing so it's mostly merino like extra fine merino so I'm hoping that this this will be enough to make um, like a sweater and I got two of them so I'll make so I can make like a very very thin sweater like under shirt kind of deal with this one and then I'm hopefully this is enough yarn for like a skirt that um, I'm planning on doing um, I'm not sure what kind of skirt yet because there's like two types that I want like or three types because I was thinking of doing an A-line skirt or a circle skirt but that requires um, increasing well the A-line will increase at two ends of the skirt but the circle skirt you have to increase like um, every other round basically and probably every other stitch um, in the round so that seems more daunting than the A-line skirt um, or the third option is to make something I've never made before or that's not as simple as an A-line or circle skirt um, and it's a uh, horichima, horichima. Uh, it's a Korean type skirt that's like pleated I think and then you tie it in the front so that looks super cute okay like I've seen like all the shops that carry it um, I think Tetoro or Tetoro uh, carries it and it's so cute um, and I like the idea of it like I kind of can guess on how to make it but I have to make it bottom up instead of top down so uh, and that doesn't require um, a waistband even though I have um, the waistband thing for it the stretching material waistband the elastic waistband for it um, or for a-line and circle skirts I can just put a freaking something or oh elastic in it but yeah Horiyu Chima is probably better in my opinion because you don't have to fiddle with that you just have to either a double knit or knit a large portion and then fold it over and then cut out like a slit somewhere somehow <laughs> so there's that but because it's merino I definitely could steak it or not steak it or steak the hole or um, uh, crochet or not crochet or sew apart and then cut it like I could do that because it's merino or needle felt the surrounding area around that slit and if you look up what a hori chima is then you can probably guess what I'm talking about um <clears throat> So that's the black yarn I got from Color Mart and I have like three other yarns from Color Mart and this is the linen that I bought and it's lace weight even though it was put on the site as a four ply weight which four ply weight is around fingering um, but yeah this is a 
a lot thinner than I thought it would be. So I'm not even sure if I can use this for what I was thinking for. Maybe I could use it as a la as the lace for um what I was thinking of because it does need a lace weight and a fingering weight. So maybe if I just buy the fingering weight um for it then it would be mostly linen because would, the other yarn that I was thinking about was linen and cotton. Uh, I was trying to replace that with this, but looks like this would be the lace instead of the silk that I was thinking of. So yeah, definitely cheaper because that silk is so, so, so expensive. <laughs> it's like 25 for 100 grams. Um, and this is 300 grams for, uh, or it was 16 for 150 grams. So this is definitely a lot cheaper than that. And it's linen, so it's breathable, but not as soft as silk, so. But I was hoping that this would be a softer linen, but I don't know. I mean, it does wash up with time, and it would soften over time with washing, so whatever, I guess. And um, this is what I got this order really for. The other ones are just like um, extra that I wanted. But this is what I really wanted. Look how fluffy it is. It's just like a fluff ball. And this is like without... Um, uh, washing it because I don't think color I washed it because I didn't request it and it's already so fluffy and apparently you can use this for machine knitting as well even though it is fluffy so yeah and this is marked as a DK weight and actually might be a DK but it's like a thick to thin um, kind of yarn so, and um, I bought this for um, the Pavlova pullover because uh, that looks so fluffy. It's like a fluffy dream, honestly. <laughs> and yeah, it uses fluffy yarn as well because the original was like um, Surrey Alpaca silk yarn. Um, and it was like extra fluffy so yeah I got this for the main color and then I was planning on pairing it with this that I showed you last time um, it's the rose double soft merino by knitting for olive which is this is continued and this is called um, the alpaca merino remake uh, DK weight or DK weight alpaca merino remake um, on uh, on color mark or a heavy DK weight something like that um, but yeah and this is the color in antico or uh, rosa antico because it's the main strand or the core is um, like a light pink light lavender kind of color um which is perfect for this because then it complements each other really well and this is not a white it's like um or the fluff isn't white it's more of a beigey gray color which is um kind of similar to this oh I guess never mind because it looks more pinky um, when you hold it next to something white. It's definitely more pink, like pinky gray. Yeah. So this is the best.
purchase. <laughs> and they still have a ton of other colors in this kind of yarn. So I guess grab it before uh, it gets sold out. I mean, they have a lot of it. Oh yeah, and this is 300 grams of this. And then this next yarn is also from Color Mart, um, and it's their, um, what is it called, 77% mohair with 30% alpaca. And because there's, a, I assume there's a lot of spinning oil in this, it's actually really hard. Um, and this is uh, listed as a DK weight, but it looks more like fingering. But I have to wash it first to see if it blooms a lot or just a little bit because I actually bought this so I can use it for um, the Ingrid sweater by Petit Knit. So, and you'd have to um, pair this with a mohair so it's like double mohair because they're both 70% mohair <laughs> so yeah that's a lot of mohair but um I was thinking of doing it with maybe ballerina the mohair color is called ballerina um but I'm still undecided because it looks like such a soft pink and I think it would blend well together, but I think you would still see the cream color, um, 50 or 70% mohair and 30% alpaca more. Um, it is fuzzy though, so. But this was way softer right now. Or instead of the ballerina, I used the cherry blossom color. And this is a deeper, slightly deeper pink and a cooler tone pink. So, but the strand on this is still like really light. So I was thinking it would blend in and just give it like a really nice pink halo. So I still need to, <coughs> oh. Vocal fry. I still need to um, knit this up and then wash it. So with both colors to see if I like either of them. Because it requires like four or no five um, little hair balls. So I have six. So I can just like swatch everything. And I know that I have extra, like three hundred meters extra. Of this yarn and it requires a thousand meters so it's like ample enough so I could swatch willy-nilly kind of so yeah I don't know which one you could put it in the comments which one you think I should do but maybe I should swatch and then show you guys because I haven't bought either patterns yet, but for this color combo, I got the approval of the person who made it. I think um, her Instagram uh, handle is Sand Main Knits. Because um, I think her name is like. Hannah Sandler, so she used her last name in her um, Instagram handle, but yeah, uh, I just can't wait to swatch this. So, ugh. that was a lot of yarn, a lot of projects, well, two whips, three finished projects that I never showed anybody <laughs> um, and I hope you had 
a nice time meeting and um, take a water break or um, sip some tea or something. Just a reminder to always stay hydrated. Um, and um, yeah. I also wore this like several times this week already and it's just so warm for something so thin and so holy. I mean not H-O-L-Y but like H-O-L-E-Y. You know what I mean? It's a very different uh yeah and um yeah it does shape my waist a little bit so that was the goal of that, the crazy shaping that I did. <laughs> but I think I would recommend not changing your needle size because that was like a whole thing. And um, it's always better to not change your needle size, honestly. Um, but yeah, maybe I would have been okay. it would have been okay with the fluffy or like the balloon shape um, on the arm because I think it it did shorten it a little bit when I changed the needle size so mm, maybe it's a little short for my liking in general but I mean I don't really have too much of a problem with it but yeah I guess changing needle size is just don't do it. <laughs> um, except for the cuff. The cuff you do have to change needle size. And um, in the ribbing as well. So, or the both at the top and the bottom. Um, yeah. Mm, I think that was it because I have no new finished objects this week. Um, I know that this episode is like one day late, but it's because yesterday, um, I hung out with my boyfriend's friends because we're, they were supposed to go go-karting and I would be knitting on the camisole, the cam camisole number four, um, but that didn't happen because there was like two birthday parties at the go-kart place <laughs> and they said it was a two to three hour wait and that was like whoa we are not going to spend two to three hours waiting because it would have been like three or four by the time we would get the spot or have opportunity to even um, um, race so yeah instead we played board games and I just knit when it's not my turn <laughs> basically so uh, that was kind of fun and then after board games we did KBBQ at his friend's place because we have cats here <laughs> and um yeah, it was kind of fun, and uh, yeah, just KBBQ with other people is always better than just two people because you're like limited in your options because um, two people can't fit more or can't finish more than one pack of meat, so yeah. I think we overbought everything. We bought like one too much package of meat and then way 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 too much veggies so yeah but at least everyone got the uh, leftovers so so that's good I think it came out to be around $27 per person yeah so that was like kind of expensive but at the same time it's like 
could it's like the same or cheaper than eating at a kibuku restaurant so I guess take your pick because at big kbbq restaurant you're like with other people and it's extra smoky because there's other people grilling and then covid so omicron mm, yeah and then like uh but then you have like a better selection of meat and you don't have to buy like a whole package of the same meat so but I don't know like if I just have brisket it's good that's it that's all I need and then I can use the extra fat for uh, other things like in place of butter or oil I would use the, extra, the clean fat so if it was like pork belly maybe I wouldn't use it because um, unless it's like super clean So, that's your cooking tip. <laughs> um, yeah, I feel like I keep buying so much yarn and I don't have enough time to make shit, so. Um, oh. Color Mart also sends you like, when you're first time ordering, which it is for me, you get like their uh, sample packet so it has like cobweb lace, heavy lace, four ply, um, fingering, heavy decay, heavy decay, um, and then air and chunky samples. And then it also lists like what kind of, um, what material it is. So 100% silk is so, so silky. And then um, this cotton is like really nice because it's also silky. Um, and then there's also the cashmere samples. You can see how nice the cashmere is. There's yak. I was looking at the yak and geelong which is a merino, a very fine type of merino. Um, and uh, corbezzo. Wait, what? Oh, I think the corbezzo is like the color name. But yeah, I was looking at the Yak and Geelong one, but it feels kind of rough. Even though Yak is supposed to be like super, super fine and super soft, it feels a little rough. And Geelong is also soft too, so it's rougher than the merino I have. Um, so that's kind of strange. Maybe it's because it's not washed, but I don't know. And um, I didn't know what Rami was, but they, there's a sample of linen and Rami, and it's like, um, it's, pretty, it's rougher than the linen I have. So I guess Rami is like a very stiff fiber. Um, and Rami is a plant-based fiber, just like linen is. Um, but yeah, the cashmere is just so nice. But really great merino um, is also kind of comparable to cashmere. So I don't, in my opinion, it's like not that different. Because this merino is just as good as this cashmere. But maybe it's a little different when it's like um, a heavy decay weight. Oh, and this is the exact one that I have. And they have it as, as a sample. It's the DK Mohair Alpaca in the color Ecru, which is basically an off-white creamy kind of color. Um, and then there's like a DK cashmere merino blend um, and then a cashmere ecru and this is like really soft to the touch and then it's a cotton nylon blend and then this is a chunky weight merino polyamine 
Mm, yeah. And then they also include a cashmere um, loft fingering weight. Loft fingering, huh? I mean, I guess so. But it's like a twisted, or not twisted, what do you call it? Um, a marled yarn. So it looks kind of cool, but um, I don't really particularly like marled yarns, but it's just so baby soft. So that's like kind of um, nice. But yeah, just feeling it in the skin form is, and I think this is washed too, maybe. Or maybe it doesn't have to be washed to be really soft. Um, because usually it would have spinning oils because it's like, you have to use machines for to make cones. And um, this was originally um, from like luxury brands, uh, yarns, it's the yarn they use. And this is like the so color mart in general uses or buys uh the yarn that uh, that luxury brands aren't using so instead of going to like the dump um it would go to color mart but it's only scottish and italian mills i believe but i think those are like the two main sources of yarns in general for uh, luxury brands in general so yeah they specialize in ca cashmere so if you are looking for cashmere they have so many blends wool blends of cashmere or just cashmere by itself so if you're looking for a, col a special color in cashmere in the uh, in all different weights then Color Mart is probably your best bet, and um, but cashmere is still expensive because it's like forty bucks per one hundred fifty grams. Um, and you can also buy them in fifty gram uh, cones or just something like that. Um, and you can also ask them to wash and skein these. Um, but of course that's for an extra fee because it's extra time that we need to like wash, dry, and stuff like that. And then like skein it, which also takes a lot of time. So yeah, and then um, I think they also offer services for um, if you want to twist two different yarns together um, or ply it. So applying just means um, uh, using two more two or more strands of yarn and then just spinning it or not spinning um, or just putting it on the cone together like that. So then it's like when you pull it off, it's like two loose strands. But if you twist it, it would be like this, I guess. If you use two different colors, it would be like marled, but twisting is when you like spin it together. So one wraps around the other, you know, um, and they offer that for an extra fee. They offer both plying and twisting for extra fee. So if you want to custom make a marl or something like that, they, or if you want to make a cobweb into like a fingering, they can do that for you. But of course you have to buy the yarn and that requires you to buy a lot of yarn. So it would like be like three, two or three cobwebs together to make a fingering. Or I think two cobwebs to make a lace, three or four to make a fingering or something like that. I think if you email them or something or DM them on Instagram, they can help you with that. But I'm not, I've never requested that. So yeah, 
or I think on their website, you can, after you make an account, you can also request stuff. But I'm not sure how that works or how to like input that. So your guess is as good as mine. But all I know is that I really pray, appreciate their sample pack because it really like opens your eyes to like the type of yarn that you prefer or not prefer. <laughs> or if you're curious about it, like the yakking, Geelong, Geelong, Merino. Yeah, that's like a specialty. And they have like only a couple yak options, but it's still there. It's there and they have a lot of colors in the 50-50 yak, super yak, and the 50-50 yak, Geelong blends. And I think super yak is just like an, like, an extra fine yak because they like so I don't know how mills do this but they can sort with, um, via fineness and I'm sure it's just like a very simple process but I don't I haven't seen like how they do it I'm sure that's like kind of trade secret kind of thing even though I think everybody in in the uh, industry or work at a, one, any of those mills will know but yeah <sighs> got my yarn might get some more in the future um probably most likely um but for now working on a summer mint knit working on a sweater I have two sweaters lined up <sighs> Will I regret it? Maybe, but I could probably wear the fluffy Pavlova pullover for the spring. But yeah, this coming week, gonna be up to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So pray for me. And hopefully I don't wear the wrong things on the wrong day uh, and sweat my butt off. So this is Victoria, Vic, um, and this is the end of the episode of the Yarn Positions Knitting Podcast. I'll see you next week. Bye!